What's going on, y'all? I'm KM Best. I am back home, and Marvel Snap announced that there will be a leaderboard at some point next season for the Infinite Ranked Mode. As someone who was originally the number one MMR player, I only learned this because the devs told me, so it's going to be great to see other people pick up that number one MMR designation that currently I am the only person to hold because they didn't have a leaderboard outside of their internals before. So... I got cracking on building some decks for ladder, and of course, since it's the weekend, I started playing with Silver Samurai and Dakin, and I found a list that I played 50 games with, and it had a 60% win rate over those 50 games with absolutely no bots. Let's check it out. Now, this is the list. I pulled it off of untap.gg. I was just messing around looking for Dakin Silver Samurai decks, and I found this, and I was like, oh... That looks like a pretty compelling mishmash of mid-range cards, and it absolutely was. But there's a lot more intricacy to playing this deck than I think there looks like there is at first glance. There's a lot of cards that when you look at it, you're like, why is that there? Why are we a hood deck? Why are we a Mirage deck? What, what are we doing here? So I think fundamentally, we start with Mirage, Angela, Kitty Pride. That is like a baseline mid-range core. We are looking to use those cards to create very powerful two-cost cards. Obviously, when you get multiples of them, that is your best opener the majority of the time. But there's a lot of other stuff going on here. So, Silver Samurai, always discarding the lowest power card, means it'll often discard Dakin's Muramasa Shard, or you can try to set it up so that it discards a Swarm. Now, you also have Colleen Wing in order to discard these Swarms. One of the things I like about this list is a lot of other decks playing like Colleen Wing, Silver Samurai, Swarm stuff are not going to be able to sort of pick and choose when they play the Colleen Wing. They're going to have to like, oh man, I really need this 2-4. I need to play it now. But because of the Kitty Pride, a lot of our curve actually gets filled up pretty reasonably, right? So we can go like, you know, Angela on 2, Kitty Collector on 3, Dakin Kitty on 4. And there's like a lot of things that can let us save that hard for when we actually need it. So I think this deck makes better use of Colleen Wing than I think a lot of other versions that I've seen of this list do. And I've been really impressed with just how the whole package comes together. There's a lot of overlap between the packages in this list. So like Colleen Wing can be pitching Swarm and then Silver Samurai can pitch Swarm, but they can also both pitch the Muramasa Shard. You can use Killmonger to get rid of the Muramasa Shard. Killmonger also gets rid of the Hood. The Hood and Dakin also both pump Collector. There's just so much overlap, basically. And all of that overlap means that it's very hard to like figure out what you're doing. Now, there are some weaknesses that this deck has. Uh, no tech cards is a straight up weakness. It absolutely is. People not knowing what you're doing is an advantage, but once they realize that you don't have tech cards, that could be a legitimate problem. So Shang-Chi decks are just going to be able to go really, 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 really tall, and you can't do anything about it. The decks that Shang-Chi would normally beat. That said, I've just been very impressed with this deck in terms of just being a good deck that puts out a lot of power in very unexpected ways. And it is the first deck I've played with Silver Samurai and Dakin in it that I haven't just been like, why are we doing this? Why, why are we playing these cards? So I do want to bring it to your attention. I had a 60% win rate over 50 games of ladder with absolutely zero bots in it. So I was pretty impressed in my 50 game sample size. Let me know how it did for you. I will be jumping right from here into a card by card breakdown. The Hood is a card I was a little bit surprised to see in the list, but he gradually justified his inclusion by just putting out a lot of points and getting destroyed by our Killmonger or just not really hurting all that much to play out normally. Of course, he pumps the Collector a little bit. Mostly what he's used for is you get an Angela proc and then you Killmonger him away and then you have the Demon in your hand and you got the Angela proc. That's, that's usually how it goes and that's usually a plus EV proposition. Make no mistake, this is a Kitty Pride deck through and through. Kitty Pride is the heart and soul of the list. There are plenty of other things going on, but she is, oh, she's so good. Angela, the collector, Kitty Pride. I mean, that's, that's just how you do it. Angela is enormous, especially when you have a Kitty Pride backing her up, but you also have like, you know, Muramasa Shard that gets Killmongered or a... Uh, the hood that gets killmongered. You can make her pretty damn large in this list. You get to put a decent amount of points on the board. And you get to do so in a way that people are not used to playing against. You have a lot of like, you play like 
four six power cards on turn six some of the time like that's really 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 strong and it is absolutely something that people are not really prepared to deal with right now sometimes people will wave you and you do have to get ahead of that but mostly angela is just completely enormous mirage is a way to fill your curve so you don't need the colleen for tempo and also just a way to get cards that you're really happy with a lot of the time that additional two power really helps your explode on turn six style of play, which isn't the only thing you're going to be doing, but it is something that happens a decent amount. Uh, I've hit Deadpools with this, which is phenomenal. I've hit Death. I've hit Jeff. There's just a ton of good hits for this card right now. And as this deck wants to be able to pick and choose when it plays its cards, the timing of your discards is extremely important based on the quality of your hand you generally benefit from just having things to do, which is, of course, to say nothing of the fact that she, of course, buffs Collector. The other scaling threat in this deck, of course, is the Collector. He goes very, 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 very tall, very, very, very easily. There are not a lot of decks where I have to legitimately worry about the Collector hitting, like, 9, 10 Shang-Chi range. I actually had to worry about it a pretty decent amount when I played this deck, so do keep that in mind. Three guys, and they pump the collector when they get discarded. So Swarm is the card you're looking to discard a pretty decent amount of the time. Like, just getting two of them is really good, but getting four or three, like, that that's the kind of thing that can really break games wide open in sort of mid-rangey point slam mirrors. Like, if both of you are playing decks that look to dodge Shang-Chi by going pretty low and aren't really having anything that elevate over the top of that, I mean you are going to win the more free cards you play in those games. You are going to have a pretty significant advantage. So keep in mind, of course, that Colleen Wing and Silver Samurai, they're different cards. Colleen Wing discards the card with the lowest cost. Silver Samurai discards the card with the lowest power. And you do need to kind of be planning for that the entire game. You need to be thinking, all right, what do I do if I draw it? Will I play the Silver Samurai? How do I set up my hand such that drawing Colleen or Silver Sam is always going to be something good for me? Because the Swarms and, of course, Dakin's Muramasa Shard are pretty much the only targets you want to hit with those cards. Colleen Wing is just a, a, a 2 4, but B, usually a pretty advantageous 2 4, because what you're using her for usually is either deploying on the final turn of the game and discarding a Muramasa Shard, or deploying a little before that and discarding a Swarm or a Muramasa Shard. So she usually ends up being significantly more than a 2-4. She's a really good card in this list. I'm reminded of some of the lists back in the beta, actually. I think Freddy Babes used to play a list where it would be like, the only things in it were like Colleen Wing and Swarm, and it was just good enough that when you got Colleen Wing Swarm, it was just you got far enough ahead, and this deck's kind of like that. Killmonger is good both offensively and defensively. Defensively, he's another way to kill off the Muramasa Shard and, of course, kill off the Hood so you don't have to deal with him. This, of course, can give you extra Angela procs. Offensively, I mean, if you run into Thanos, this card is great. <laughs> like, there are a lot less people playing around Killmonger right now because a lot less people are playing the card Killmonger right now, and he's just generally pretty damn solid. Even against the Deadpool deck, if you can lose priority, he'll kill their Deadpool on the final turn of the game, and they will be a little bit surprised by that. Dakin has been pretty solid in this list. I think generally just a 3-8 is pretty good. There are some situations where he goes taller than 3-8 if you get him in a Muir Island, if you get a buff onto him, or if you do what I did and throw a Muramasa Shard in a Bar Sinister and then Killmonger it for a 64 power Dakin. That can happen too. Mostly, he's just like a good card who has some significant upside here. And because his shard is always one power and one cost, it is very often going to be a thing that is easy to target with either Silver Samurai or Colleen Wing. I can't say I love Silver Samurai offensively, but he was really good as an enabler in this deck because a lot of the hard things about playing this deck are setting up your hand so that Silver Samurai will hit the stuff that you want. And a lot of this is just ordering, right? So if you have, you know, a kitty and something that you want to discard, like let's say you have a swarm and a kitty and the kitty is three, you want to play the kitty and the Silver Samurai in the same turn, so it's always going to hit the swarm. That's like a really basic example, but you have to be thinking about stuff like that all the time. <laughs> like, you have to be spending the entire game thinking about stuff like that, like, Obviously, there are going to be situations where you're going to want to roll 50-50s, where, like, it's a Killmonger and a Swarm, and you can't get the Killmonger out of your hand, 
and you need to hit the swarm with the silver samurai there are going to be situations where you have to play like that but do keep in mind that a lot of the time proper planning ahead can get you out of those situations before you even get in them. with two activators for stature in silver samurai and black bolt this is a kind of no-brainer inclusion she is one of the best cards in the game when you activate her effect a 1-6 extremely powerful we have another one of those coming across from the demon and of course kitty pride can get up to 1-6 as well it is pretty common to put about 18 power with three energy on the final turn of the game this is a critical part of doing that. Blackagar Boltagon was actually kind of the card I was the most disappointed in over the course of this whole thing. I, I think you still do have to run it, but there were a lot of scenarios where it was just like, all right, I want my turn five to be Silver Samurai Kitty Pride way more than I want it to be Black Bolt like most of the time. And I do think that is worth paying attention to because like Black Bolt's normally a really good card. And the fact that I'm like, oh man, I really would just rather play Silver Sam kitty pride like just as much as possible it, it does sort of you know make me think a little bit about how i want to change this deck going forward i don't think i'm brave enough to cut black bolt it's just something that i noticed all right y'all that's gonna be it for me this is gonna be a little bit of a different video normally like my deck highlight videos there's like the breakdown and then like a whole bunch of conquest games but because we're back on ladder, I want to know what you think about this format of video. It's going to be a little bit shorter, a little bit more bite size, a little bit more digestible, and just some good highlights with the deck. So let me know what you think in the comments. As always, I read every one. I'm very dumb. Thank you so much. I have been Cam Best. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Have a good one. It does, in fact, delete Mr. Negative Effect. Ah! Very interesting. Solid game. See, that's an appropriate emote. I can't emote back, but I, whatever. It's fine. Appropriate emoting. Yeah, inverted Iron Man will be 5-5. Five, five. Ah! Does it just delete the cost effect or both cost and power? Just the cost. Why would it affect power? Whew! Why do you guys like this lame-ass Spotlight Kitty variant? I don't know. Why don't you? Holy fuck. Like, why do you not? I've been looking for a kitty variant forever. Is she getting married to the dragon thing or is he walking her down the aisle? Okay, as, as a non-Marvel nerd, what I have learned is she is in the process of leaving Colossus at the altar and the dragon thing is her best man. That is my understanding of it. The dragon thing appears to be her best man. Wait, do I even need to do this? I can just play Magneto next turn. Coming right before Hood? Uh, so it's like, it's like this, it'll discard those, and then we just get arbitrarily large on the Comartage. What do you call the best man on the bride side? I don't know. This is fine. Yeah, it's just two demons and a huge Dakin. And then I get shang chi but, you know, whatever, right? Baron Mordo! <laughs> Alright, uh, Kitty Pride, Baron Mordo. So that adds a total, this is 7, this is 5, adds 12, go to 18 on Sokovia. 
run the risk of getting killmongered in the mid. And then just say, you know, that's not real. Killmonger in the mid is just simply not a real thing. Never getting killmongered in the mid, that's not real. Both demons left, then Magneto. Uh, that requires more energy than you might have expected it to require. That would require significantly more energy than it would have been doable. Okay, there seems like there is some interest. Guy putting two just to be just to be a dick. I respect that a lot. Shout out to you. Maybe if I don't get a better offer, Jesus. Okay, now there's now there's only this interest. Interesting. Oh shit, chat. Do you see it? Do you see what's happening here? What are the benefits? Literally nothing. I don't understand why people do it. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that, but no, I seriously, I don't get why people do it. They just want to be part of something. Yo, check this shit out. Yo, check this shit out. And the Black Bolt 4X follow-up? Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. That is an enormous Dakin. And then we have the 4X Black Bolt follow-up. Although the Silver Samurai might be funnier. I mean, how many cards do they have in hand? Uh, they have five cards in hand. They'll have six. If they play, like, two cards here, they're just, like, they're turbo-owned. Now, granted, they are absolutely shang chi this deck. Like, no, no questions about it at all. But the 64 power Dakin is, is nothing to sneeze at. Nothing to sneeze at at all. There goes a ninja. Right, okay. A Jeff. A Zabu. A Captain Marvel. They win the middle. They have one card in hand and then draw one card. Why are you playing ladder? Because it's a round. Do we think they have a Shang-Chi here? Do we think they ever actually have a Shangers here? Because if they do, we can't beat it. Let's die to the Shangers. No? Do we even beat this? We win a tiebreaker. Let's go. <gasps> we did it. They did not have a Shang here. Hmm. Thanos, huh? Okay, I like the collector there. I don't like Mirage going off now, but what can you do? Armor. Okay, so... I mean, this could be a lot of things, but I am... My, my... My brain is sort of in the air here for a potential Spectrum kind of deck. Armor Cosmo? Yeah, like, my brain is sort of thinking this could be a Spectrum. Now there's a Goose, too. 
Yeah. There's a lot of things this could be. Spectrum, definitely one of them. And I'm looking to draw... God only knows what I'm looking to draw here, actually. Not a lot of good ones I think I can get. Uh, Killmonger is pretty solid. I don't hate a Killmonger here. I'm into that. As is, though, it's looking pretty dicey for me, I think. Samurai isn't bad. Um, It discards my Angela, so it's it's pretty, very, pretty bad, I think, actually. <laughs> I have to do it to get the stature cheap, but I do think it's pretty bad. Maybe they middle the stone here. No? Okay. They middle they that one. Whoa! Okay, suddenly I'm in business. Suddenly I am absolutely in business. Like, suddenly I'm so in business that I snap, I think. Yeah, I'm extremely in business here. They move good destroy. Uh, what do you mean? We have we both have armors there. I'm filling this lane up, but because I have Dakin and Muramasa shard, I'm not actually filling the lane up. Does that make sense? So my turn next turn is like Dakin, Colleen, Wing, Kitty Pride. They move goose. Well, I don't. Goose doesn't change anything about what I'm doing. They move Goose Destroyer. I don't think they're playing Destroyer, but maybe. We get like Prop X tier. That would be vaguely annoying. What the sub goal? It doesn't say. It doesn't say shit. Okay, we did get Prop X, but I'm not seeing how we're dying is the other thing. Like, yeah, we got, we got Profex, but also, this is a big-ass number. They have six in hand, so a dino is five? Um... I mean, this is technically more points. I'll play it. Tiebreaker win, baby! <laughs> that was pretty scary. Ten more turns and the game was his. Yep. Okay, is this a bot? No, they have, like, the, the Do Not Fist Bump Wolverine title. Finally, I have enough to request a song. Hey, yo. That wasn't a bot. This isn't either. I haven't seen a single bot today. Thanos on Elysium. Yikes. All right, so my Kitty Pride is living on borrowed time here. My Kitty Pride is absolutely living on borrowed time here. Um, just going to get Killmongered at some point. Yeah, we're just seeing what happens, KX. Living on borrowed time. What are your thoughts on Loki? I kind of like it. Okay, when is she going to get Killmongered? I'm just sitting here waiting. I'm just sitting here waiting for the inevitable Killmonger. Mm 
Not what I meant. Not what I meant, y'all. I can take a turn off, though. Yeah, I'll take a turn off here. Ah-ha-ha! -ha! The inevitable Killmonger! We dodged it. No, we dodged the Killmonger. We did it. Lowest power. All right, look, it's always the swarm, right? It's always the swarm. Always the swarm. Yeah, it is always the swarm. Oh, man. All right, they lose a power stone, which is like actually kind of relevant, I think, some of the, some of the time. All right, holy shit. Uh, all my hand costs nothing. The only punish is I draw Black Bolt, which means I have to play the stature now. Okay. Okay. Does Destroy Thanos run Shang? It very, very well could. It very, very well could. All right, there's a Colleen wing. Okay, so we play our entire hand here. Um, I'm gonna do the little old juke and uh, move the collector over there. That's where my head is at here. So we're at 11 and 11 here with two here. And then we are going to Killmonger because I know at least one of the cards in their hand is a demon, which they are going to play. Uh, we are going to distribute the rest of our power. It goes probably here and here. This goes here. This goes here. And then... This. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at them counting on that stuff. Look at them counting on those ones. Look at all the ones they're counting on there. My God. My God. Hey, yo, what if Doom Dazzler in Hella? Okay. <laughs> And you're not like a fucking brave truth teller. Like, oh, I'll take a ban to tell you to shut the fuck up. I don't care. How much do you even play off stream? Not a ton. But I can tell you I complain when I do. No doubt about that. And you people, I wish it worked. I wish there was simply a, a thing that let you mute everyone. Perhaps. Because instead, I have to click this button every fucking game. There should just be a button that lets you turn it off. There should simply be a button that lets you turn that off. Uh, what's coming out of this X-Mansion? Cyclops? Stasher? Ugh. Um, I think I'm favored here, though. So, we have... Shard KM. Actually, we don't even have to Shard KM. We can just go KM Kitty, 
Black Bolt, Silver Samurai, the Muramasa Shard. Unless we draw the hood, in which case we feel like the dumbest motherfucker on Earth. Still, I think this is fine. Ah, uh, okay, it's discard. I do feel like the dumbest motherfucker on Earth. I do feel dumb. I feel real dumb, but maybe I can get something good going here. Uh, gave him a free guy, huh? Okay. Can we win this? We go... One, two, three, add a bunch, go bigger on the middle. They have two cards in hand. What are the odds they're just Apocalypse Chavez here? What are the odds? No one's ever lost eight cubes on that before. It's never Apocalypse Chavez, right, chat? Never. <laughs> Yo! It's actually not Apocalypse Chavez. <laughs> Under any circumstances, do not roll a one in four. Maybe Jeff. Let I'll 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 dial it back. But like, no, don't fucking do that. Do not roll one in fours. How about a one and two? I'm also pretty tempted to still say no. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think it's still a no on that one. Well, Eliath? Come on now. 99% of gamblers quit before they win it big. It's true. It's true. And yet... Viper! I see. I see. I see. I see. All right, he's never dying. Oh, shit, he actually is never dying. Oh, shit, we might end up trying to 50-50 Viper that back to them. We're so 50-50 vipering that back to them every single time. Oh. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, shit. Damn, you hate to see it. Is Lady Deathstrike worth 6k? No. It's very hard for things to be worth 6k. 